All right, people, hello. Uh, I've spent a lot of time not doing the thing that I'm going to do now because I was overthinking it, which you'll see is sort of my move, kind of like my signature thing. Uh, this is an elaborate D&D &D mode that I made for Emacs on top of org mode. Uh, it involves a domain-specific language, which is essentially a you know, variant of Lisp that... Uh, I'm not going to lie to you, it's not particularly well thought out, but it seems to work for me. So I'm going to do a sort of lightning overview uh, so that I uh, don't keep feeling bad about not doing this thing that I've been intending to do for many, many days. So uh, briefly, in org mode here, uh, I've got some things set up using Helm. This is, say, all headings. You can see I can go to all characters easily enough. Character sheets are actually stored in headings with all of the attributes, proficiencies, skill disadvantages, attacks, stored in a special format here that gets parsed by my code on load and then stored into like a big hash map that can then be pulled out. And these things are, some of them have special processing that then happens to them. This format is for characters. It's also used for monsters. Uh, you can go to the log, you know, it's a real exciting. This is the story as it's unfolded. This is my test file, by the way. So it's has a collection of things from various adventures that I've I've run and uh, just features that I've been testing. I, I'm not gonna really tell you anything about that because I just can't be bothered. Let's come down to the queue here. You've got the actor state is all stored in a table here. Uh, these are also then pulled from the character sheets. Uh, also can't be bothered to give you any information about that. Uh, I have some monsters added. Let's just run through some basic stuff. If I want to send the status of all characters to the chat. Uh, there you go. That's dumped in there. If you want to roll initiative, you keep expanding the uh, queue of commands until nothing is left. It's the basic concept. If we're going to say do some chatting, this is me as the DM just typing things to the characters. You're in a cave. It's a, it's a classic. Uh, characters can respond. These are characters that are directly uh, in this, the list of characters and who aren't dead. Uh, you can respond as them, which is helpful when a character is, you know, or rather a player is absent or just have an NPC that needs to talk. Hi. Uh, God. Guys, guys, I'm really good at this. Just DM of the year. I don't, let me tell you. If you want to talk as someone who's not even in the scene, it, that's also uh, convenient enough. He says yes, because this is, you know, top notch, you know, uh, dialogue here. All right, so let's get to, let's do a skill check. Well, you know, let's just do a turn actually. So here you can see that was dumped into chat. Moloch is gonna do something. Let's say he's going to do the Eldritch Blast. This is a custom command that was written for this character because, you know, it's hard to comp together some high-level action sometimes. This uh, model helped dial that in. So the first time he cast this, it was kind of a pain in the ass. I had to look up a bunch of stuff. And then, you know, now it's, uh, well, you know, I guess yeah, I could have done that correctly. Um, so he's actually attacking himself with this, which is not what I wanted. But it's all tied into undo. So there you go. I've undone it. So he's going to attack, say, Orc 1. You expand, you expand, he's hit. Don't know why that nil was in there, just pretend you didn't see that. Uh, and he missed, because it seems to happen to him actually a lot in play, and it's uh, it's pretty embarrassing, actually. It's kind of sad, because he's a, he's a warlock. He needs to Eldritch Blast people, and it's, uh, it's a bummer. It's a real bummer. So that's his turn. Move on to Adrian, who seems to actually hit things sometimes. Um, Make sure the queue is cleared. You come over here, he's going to attack. He's, this is Adrian's attacking. He's going to attack the Lightbringer, which he got from Lost Minds of Fandelver. He's going to attack Orc 3. If you want to give him advantage, you could throw that in there. You can see how these expand out. There's a priority based on certain commands. Uh, if I wanted to actually make this roll with what I call suspense, which uses Discord uh, spoiler tags to sort of simulate the feeling of rolling, even though the roll has already been completed, you can do that here as well. You go a little bit slower so you can read these if you're so inclined. And you can see up here, 
Orc 3 had taken that damage. And uh, that just it just keeps going and going. You can do death saves. That's my doorbell. My food just got here. Um, I'm just going to go. I'll make another video some other time. Uh, it's going to be great. I, 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 think you'll, I think you'll like it or not. I guess I don't care. Bye.